Hey, AP Physics C, it's Horner. We're going to look at the 2004 AP Physics C mechanics question number one. You've got a rope of length L. It's attached at this point C, and it's free to pivot. So you're holding onto that rope. You swing down, and hopefully you miss this cliff here. Uh, and then you basically just go zoop, and you let go of the rope. Uh, and you and the object that you kick right here both land in the lake together at point D. Uh, which is another vertical distance L. So this distance L, which makes this distance L and this distance L the same. The person object, they do land together. They want us to derive expressions. Make sure you use M1, that should be an M little 2, L and G. So if you use anything else, uh, they won't give you credit for that. So the first thing they want us to do is find out the speed of the person just before the collision with the object. So we want to know what is the speed of the person right here. Uh, and if you think about it, it's just a pendulum. We know that if you're at the top, okay, then the, the distance that you fall is just going to be L, because L is going to be the same regardless. So at the top, we have potential energy. So this is potential energy. Uh, down here is kinetic energy. And because of this is a conservative situation, um, conservative in that there's no loss due to friction or anything else, um, we can use the conservation of energy. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that 1 half m uh, v squared is going to equal m g. And then we can't use h here. So instead, we're going to use l. Uh, now we need to solve for v. And so v is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times g times l. I got that by multiplying both sides by 2 and crossing off our um, crossing off our m's because m won't matter in this one and then we had to take the square root of both sides too in order to get the v all by itself. We've got to remember this equation because it's going to be really important. Okay, um, So the speed at b and so I'm going to add b here just because that's going to be important. It's different than the speed at d. The speed at d is going to be different. Alrighty so now that we've done that let's go ahead and look at part b. Part b says the tension of the rope just before the collision with the object. At this point, we're going to need to go back to thinking about force again. And uh, we need to do some of the forces for that object when it's at the, uh, when it's at the bottom. Uh, well, actually, for the person. So here is the pivot point. There's that pivot point C. We're down at the bottom. And let's think about all the forces that are acting on the person. So first one is MG. Uh, the next one is going to be the tension in the rope. And uh, don't try to put FC. Don't try to put FC because FC is really the sum of the two forces here. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do this one first. We're going to say the sum of the forces on that person at B is equal to MV squared all over. And instead of R here, we're going to have to use L. Um, but let's go ahead and just use R. We'll just have to remember to go back and fix it later. What are the two forces? Well, I know going up is tension minus mg going down. And then I have mv squared over R. So we're saying that centripetal force or that overall net force is actually pointing in this direction. So that's the centripetal force. Uh, at this point, we need to get the T all by itself. So T is equal to mv squared over R plus mg. And now we need to substitute in for our velocity. And remember, the velocity from before, from part one, is VB is equal to the square root of 2 GL. Because we can't use V in our final expression, we can't even use R. So we're going to have to switch some things here. So T is going to be equal to, and then it's the mass of the person, times 2 GL. Now, why are we not squaring it? It's because it is the square root. Um, when you do it this way. And so if I square both sides, that gets rid of this. And notice that it is v squared. So if I square this, I get rid of the radical here, and I'm left with the 2gl. Can't use r, so what I'm going to need here is just put l. And then I need to add that to my mg. Now, uh, this is going to be equal to, notice the l's cross off. OK, so you can do that here. And you're left with 2 mg plus m1g, and 2mg plus 2m1g uh, 
is going to be equal to 3 times the mass of that person times gravity. And so that's what tension is equal to. Uh, you might rewrite, rewrite it again just so that it's clear. T is equal to M1G. So not too bad. You've got to go back and think about forces again. Notice, uh, just to review, some of the forces was the centripetal force, which is MAC. Remember, AC is equal to V squared over R. That's where this comes in. Uh, then we said tension is up in the same direction as centripetal force, so it's T minus MG is equal to MV squared over R. Uh, T is equal to MV squared over R plus MG. We plugged in for V the 2GL um, for V squared, crossed off the L's. We still have the M's here. We're able to add the 2MG plus the MG, and we get the 3MG. Alrighty, so that's great. Now we need to do the next part, which is try to find the uh, speed of the object just after the collision. So this part, uh, you're going to have to go back and think about momentum and how momentum is uh, really conserved here. So if you think about momentum, what kind of collision is this? Well, they are together. So if they are together after the collision, we know that uh, this is a collision um, that is uh, going to conserve momentum, okay? Uh, and so it is a inelastic collision. And in inelastic collisions, remember our equation is M1 VB plus the mass of the second thing times its speed, but its speed is zero at the beginning, so we just leave that out, is equal to the sum of the masses, M1 plus M2, and we multiply that times the speed of both of them afterwards. Now we can go back and go ahead and plug everything in. So the speed after is equal to, now I have to divide both sides by M1 plus M2. So I'm going to have M1 over M1 plus M2. And then here I need to put in my speed um, for at uh, the speed of, uh, at B, sorry. Uh, now uh, we have to put everything in the correct terms. So here we're going to say V after is equal to M1 over M1 plus M2. And then we have to take that times and remember VB is the square root of 2 times G times L. Uh, if you only did this part, just these two, you'd get 2 out of 3. If you add this, you get the third point. So you've got to make sure that you're always doing it in all the things that they want. Alrighty, all the all the variables that they want. Let's look at the next part of this problem. It is letter D. And for letter D, it says the ratio of kinetic energy of the person object system before the collision uh, to the kinetic energy after the collision. So we're going to look at the, the kinetic energy before and then the kinetic energy after. So the kinetic energy before, we're just going to put KB, is equal to 1 half of the mass of the first thing times the speed of the first thing squared at point B. That's equal to 1 half of M1. And remember, we said it was 2 times G times L is speed. And so you can cross off the 1 half and the 2, and we get M1GL. The kinetic energy after is equal to 1 half. Now we've got both things moving together. So that's M1 plus M2 times the speed of both things uh, after. So I'm just going to put F for final. Uh, you can take this thing and we can do 1 half of M1 plus M2. Now remember before for the velocity after the final velocity from what we had up here is M1, uh, so it's M1 squared over, we're going to have M1 plus M2 2 squared because that's part of the V and then we had to multiply that times 2 GL. Uh, so now if we reduce all this down we can get rid of the 2. Uh, we can also kind of look here and notice that we have M1 plus M2 squared on the bottom and M1 plus M2 here so we can cross off one of those and we are left with the kinetic energy after of M1 squared over M1 plus M2, and then we take that times GL. So that is the kinetic energy after. 
So, so far we've got those two. Now we've got to uh, put a ratio for the two. So KB over KA. This is equal to M1GL. And then this is over the big quantity, M2GL, all over M1 plus M2. Uh, at this point, we'll notice that the G's and the L's go away. Um, and so we are left with KB over KA is equal to, now, this M1 and M2. Now, let's see. Uh, be careful because this one is M1 squared. So if I take an M1 here, I can get rid of this one altogether, get rid of the square, so that goes away. And now I'm left with M1 plus M2 all over M1. Um, lots of work on that one for two points. So um, just kind of remember that as you go through. You get one point for doing this much. You get one point for doing uh, this bottom part where you actually solve for the ratio. So this is one point here, and then you get one point here. Uh, the very last thing to do is uh, for letter E is to find the total displacement, X, of the person from position A until the person and the object land in the water at point D. Uh, so to do that, we need to think first about uh, the correct expression for looking at the distance fallen and the time it takes to fall from B to the water. So um, we know that L is equal to, so this is our height, is equal to 1 half G T squared. So DY is equal to 1 half G T squared. So we remember that. Um, the horizontal displacement, so we know that the position change from B to D, oops, from B to D, uh, is equal to the velocity after, so that's that final velocity times time. So if we think about, here's that cliff again, we've got, uh, it's really a double cliff, I guess, here. So the guy starts here, he swings down to point B, and then he lets go, and then he does a parabolic motion down to D. So we're going from B to D, so it's this little range right here. We want to know, um, we need to solve for x here. We know the final velocity and we know the time it takes from this equation. So what we're going to need to do next is solve this equation for time. So let's go ahead and do that. So t is equal to the square root of 2 times l over g. Um, so x b d, so this is that displacement, is equal to the final uh, velocity times time and now we're going to need to plug everything in and I know here we go this is m1 over m1 plus m2 okay times the square root of 2 gl and we multiply that times the square root of 2 l over g because that's the time so the velocity final we said was this uh, we multiply that times the time, which is this. If you go through and reduce everything down, you should end up with 2 times m1 times l all over m1 plus m2. So the 2s cross off, the l's cross off. I'm sorry, uh, the l's are left, so you still have an l left. Uh, the g's do go away and you're left with M1 and M2 on the bottom, you're left with M1 on the top and one of the L's, and then we multiply the whole thing times two because you got that two out there, uh, two times two. Uh, radical two, radical two is gonna give you two. Um, so next thing we need to do is find out that total distance. So we've got the distance from B to D. We now need this horizontal distance here, uh, and if you remember, that's just L. So the total distance, total distance, is equal to what we just did, xbd plus l. So let's go ahead and plug everything in for xbd. We said that's 2 times the mass of the first one times the length of that cable over m1 plus m2 plus l. So um, now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and um, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. Uh, to simplify it, and if I want to add this L here, 
you know I've got to add, multiply both the top and the bottom by m1 plus m2. So I'm going to end up with 3m1 plus m2, uh, that's in parentheses, times L all over M1 plus M2. So a lot of really nasty algebra in here. I guess it's not bad, but you know, it just takes some time. Uh, so notice that to go from here to here, I did have to multiply both the top and the bottom by M1 plus M2. Same thing on the bottom here, M1 plus M2. So now I've got two, so three M1s plus the M2 times the L. That's where that comes from. And then on the bottom, it just stays the same. Uh, so that is the end of this problem.